4-4. Today we're going to talk about input-output tables. Sometimes they're called function tables. Sometimes they're called table of values. But they all have to do with putting something in to, to a math rule and getting something out. Okay, here's the first example. Here's an equation y equals 4x minus 2. And this is an input-output table. So we're going to take the rule and put it here. The rule is the part on this side, the 4x minus 2. The rule is what's going to happen to x for us to find y. So go ahead and put the rule here, so 4 x minus 2. Now, when you're doing these uh, in this lesson, they already picked out the x's for you. So this part of the chart over here is already filled in, which is nice. So there are the numbers they picked. So what this means is I'm going to take negative 1 and put it in x's spot so I can find out what y is. So, what you do is you write down the rule and you add what you think, what they told you x is, into it. So, 4 times negative 1 minus 2. Now you do the math. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. So that's why. Now, you do it again, only this time you use 0. So 4 times 0 minus 2. Well, 4 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Now, you do it again. Only this time we're going to use 3 for x. So 4 times 3 minus 2. Well, 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 2 is 10. Now, that's how you make an input-output table. Let's do another one. Here's another example. You've got input, rule, and output. The table already has the rule written into it. Remember, the rule is this side of the equation, the x side. They've already chosen some values to use for x. So all we have to do is fill this in, do the math, and find the y's. So, 6 times negative 5 squared. Remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. We have to do exponents first. So, negative 5 squared means negative 5 times negative 5. And that would be positive 25, positive 25 times 6. Well, think quarters. That's 150. Okay, do the next one. Put 0 in. Well, 0 squared is 0. 0 times 6 is 0. So that's what you get out of that. Next, we're going to put 5 in. Well, 5 times 5 is 25, and 25 times 6 is 150. Now you've completed this input-output table. Sometimes, an input-output table will have an extra column at the end that says ordered pair, and the directions usually change. These directions say make a table and graph the ordered pairs. So sometimes there's an extra column to fill in. It's real easy. The, f the part of the table we've been doing is this. Nothing's changed. We're going to do the table. When we finish, we're going to write the x and the y value down over here as ordered pairs. Okay, so same thing we've been doing. Here's our equation. y equals 2x, so 2x is the rule. So 2 
times negative 2, that gives me negative 4. And 2 times negative 1, that's our input. Our output would be negative 2. And 2 times 0 would give us 0. And put 1 in. 2 times 1 is 2. And 2 times 2 is 4. So there's our outputs. Now we're going to write ordered pairs. Remember, in an ordered pair, x always comes first, and there's always parentheses. So parentheses, negative 2, negative 4. Our x value and our y value. Parentheses, negative 1, negative 2. Parentheses, 0, 0. Parentheses, 1, 2. Parentheses, 2, 4. Now, since these directions say to graph the ordered pairs, now you go to a graph, you graph the ordered pairs, and you label them. You're going to label this, you're going to label the dot that you choose for this ordered pair with this label. These are your labels just like we did yesterday. Okay, if you need more help on the graphing part, look back in example two in the book. We're not connecting the dots. We're not drawing lines. We're just graphing ordered pairs, which means graphing points or graphing dots, if you will. Make sure they are labeled. Here's your video homework. Have a beautiful, lovely evening.